I'm back with my practice diary for Rachmaninoff's second sonata's final movement. Based on my previous experience, I've created a stress-free plan. I will divide this movement into three parts, each three, four pages long. And each part gets five days for analysis and four days for learning. On day one, I focused on fingering, elbow movements, precise pedaling markings, mental practice for each and both hands. And I finished off by playing, all while vividly imagining every note, singing internally with arm weight and articulations. It's day two of my Rachmaninov's second sonata practice journey. Following my plan, today I'm enhancing my mental practice with harmony, dynamics and voicing colors. I listen to each harmony, vividly imagine it, and incorporate it into my playing. I have refined dynamics in the score, enriching my mental practice and playing. And lastly, I'm perfecting voicing, carefully selecting inner voices for specific sections. Today marks the third day of my Rachmaninoff's second sonata practice journey. And following my plan, I'm enriching my inner singing by emotionally expressing the meaning behind each interval. I then dedicate time to organize the phrasing within the score, considering the length of motifs, phrases and sentences, and choosing their more prominent parts. And to conclude, I apply what I worked on by playing through the motifs, then phrases, and finally the sentences. Following my practice plan of Rachmaninoff's sonata, I spent an hour expressing emotions, shaping the music structure, organizing inner parts and playing, and cultivating confidence and stillness in my posture. I start with enriching my inner singing by emotionally portraying the music's character between the notes. I then focus on organizing the score's dramaturgic structure, ensuring a clear energy flow from the beginning of the story to climax, and conclude by playing. To continue, I'm adding a sense of an inner pulse to my playing, and reinforce stillness in my posture and self-confidence maintaining the energy in my inner singing between the notes. My focus for this last analysis day is to play with detachment, leaving behind my ego, worries and fears. This allows me to reach my ultimate goal, my why for playing the piano, creativity. My goal is to connect with something beyond myself through my music, and share that profound feeling with the audience. Mind over matter, mental proficiency dictates speed in music. 
We all understand that speeding up only by training fingers leads to a quick plateau. Acceleration is not just about quick fingers, it's about speeding up your thoughts first. That's why I dedicated five days to meticulously analyzing this piece, capturing every movement and subtle sound in my mind. And now I effortlessly translate what's in my mind to faster playing. It's simply a matter of adapting to quick thinking. That's how it is. I begin with smaller sections, gradually combining them into larger parts. This method allows my mind to adjust to thinking swiftly, sustaining focus during shorter segments and eventually expanding its ability to include bigger sections. On this final two days of the learning stage, I focus on challenging sections and I complete 20 playthroughs of the entire part. In two sections, I had to enhance my inner sensation of elbow motion and improve intonation of specific intervals to enhance accuracy and speed. Additionally, there was a need for some improvement in memorizing one specific section. Once I worked on each section separately, I ensured to practice them within larger segments as always. Although after running through the entire part 20 times it feels much easier and smoother, I realized that after 800 repetitions in the coming days as I begin working on the next section, that's when I will attain complete freedom and ease.